Hello and welcome to the Legacy Guide for Siege of Agrimar. In this series we take a look at raids from past expansions and we talk about how to get to them, how to defeat the bosses, and any notable loot that drops from that particular raid. We also look at the amount of gold we get from a run as well in case that's something that interests you. Hi, my name is Setsuko and on my channel I create informative videos about World of Warcraft to help you increase your skills and play more efficiently. Okay, so the fastest way to get to the Siege of Argamar raid is going to be to use your Dalaran Hearthstone to take you to Legion Dalaran. Then you're going to go to your faction's portal hub for the Horde. That's going to be Windrunner Sanctuary for Alliance. That's going to be Greyfang Enclave. So you're going to head over to those portals and you want to take the portal to... Uh, the Veil of Eternal Blossoms. This is going to take you to your faction's capital for the Mist of Pandaria expansion. Your capital is in the Veil of Eternal Blossoms. For the Horde, you're going to be at the Shrine of Two Moons. For the Alliance, you'll be at the Shrine of Seven Stars. The entrance for the Siege of Agrimar raid is actually right in between these two different locations. So all you have to do is hop on a mount and fly over there. You're going to see Mogushan Palace here, and there's a set of stairs leading down to this kind of circular area with all this Sha energy coming out. You want to go down below all of this, and there's going to be an entryway right in here. Now, Siege of Argamar does have several different difficulties. Uh, it has four. You have Raid Finder, Normal, Heroic, and Mythic. In order to play the Raid Finder difficulty, you have to go and talk to a specific NPC. I will have a video showing you how to get to that NPC, and I'll link to that now. In all the other difficulties, Normal, Heroic, and Mythic, you can access by just simply walking into the instance. Now, there are a couple of pieces of loot that drop in particular difficulties in this raid. On Raid Finder and Normal, you have a chance at a pet that you can't get in Heroic and Mythic, and in Mythic, you have a chance at a mount that you can't get on any of the other difficulties. I recommend that you play this on Mythic, so you have the maximum opportunity to get the mount, which I think is a little cooler than getting the pet, uh, and just run either Raid Finder or Normal, long enough to get the pet that is specific to that particular uh, difficulty level. So we're going to be doing this on Mythic level difficulty. So we're going to go ahead and we can just make sure that we have that all set up here. Our raid difficulty is Mythic. There is no difference in player size uh, for this. So once you've picked out your uh, particular difficulty setting, you can just head on in. And this is a very long raid. It on average will take you one to two hours to complete depending on how familiar you are with the content and the mobility of the class and specialization that you're playing on so expect that to take a while also expect this video to be fairly long just because there are so many bosses and this is such a big raid so once you first get into the siege of argamar you're going to just head straight down to Immersius, who's going to be the first boss Okay, so we're here at Immersius. If we take a look at his loot table, uh, it is primarily all transmog stuff here. The transmogs in Siege of Argamar are pretty good. The uh, detail, the graphic fidelity of them does hold up pretty well with what you're going to see uh, in current expansions. So I definitely think it's worth running this raid for the transmogs. Now, Immersius is an easy boss, but he's annoying and he takes a while to defeat. So we're going to run through one cycle of what you have to do, and then you just have to repeat this over and over again. Essentially, you're going to attack Immersius. You're going to get his health down to zero. Once you do that, he's going to split. When he splits, he's going to turn into a bunch of blobs that look kind of like these here. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to kill as many of the black ones as you can. So you're going to see them all fly out here. Do your best. Try to get to an area where you'll be able to kill a bunch of them. Use your ranged attacks as much as possible. Whatever kind of mobility skills you have to try to kill as many of those blobs as possible. 
Now, once you're done killing those blobs, they work their way back to the center, then you're going to have to repeat that process, get him down to 0% again, and he will split again. One of the things you want to do is try not to get too far away from the center, because this causes him to expand his uh, pool, and then he just becomes uh, not more difficult, but it just takes longer to kill him at that point as well. So I'm going to finish that up, and we will take a look at where you get the loot from and everything once he's dead. Alright, so once you kill Immersius, he doesn't actually die. You just kind of purify him, and then you will collect your uh, loot from the chest located there. Then you're going to head up these stairs. Right around the square, you're going to have to stop and push an action button to open the doors. Okay, so once you hit the button, open the doors, you're going to head up some stairs and you're going to come out into this area here, the Scarred Veil, vale, and you're immediately going to be at the next boss. The next boss is the Fallen Protectors. Uh, they have all transmog loot as well. There's a special mechanic going on here with these bosses. So what's going to happen is uh, right now you're able to damage all of them. When each of them hits 66% health, they're going to become untargetable and spawn a bunch of adds that you have to kill. They're going to do that again when they hit 33% health. Then what you need to do is kill all of them at approximately the same time within a few seconds of each other to prevent them from casting a spell and resurrecting. So what you want to do is get them all down to about 66%, then get them down to 33%, and then kill them all roughly within the same time frame as each other. So the method for doing this is mainly focus on your AoE attacks. Try to use your AoE against them. And then pay attention to their health bars. And if you notice that one of them is significantly lower or higher than the others, take the time to use your single attacks to bring the other ones down in line with where they're at. So like 77, that's a little bit high there. So I'm going to go ahead and bring them down. I just hit roughly 66% with all of them. So all of their adds are going to spawn in and I can kill them all at the same time. And then once they're all dead, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go back to using my AoE abilities. I'm going to take a look. I've got a 56 here, so I'm going to bring her closer in line with all the other ones. Then I'm going to start using my AoE abilities again to get them down. So we're going to go ahead and try to make sure that we can get all these adds at roughly the same time. So this isn't hard. All it requires you to do is, you know, look at the health bars of the enemies. So now we're going to want to make sure that we've got him over here. He's uh, at 28% health. So we're going to want to bring him in line with the rest of them. Uh, she's getting pretty low. So we're going to want to try to finish this off really quickly here. All right, and that was it. That Bond of the Lotus is the ability that would revive them uh, if you were not to uh, kill them all within a certain time period. So pretty easy fight. Just pay attention to the health bars, and it's no big deal. Now, after you uh, have killed this boss, you're going to head down into the Big Blossom Mine. You don't really need to kill anything here. You can skip over everything if you want. You mainly just need to kill the little guy who is in front of the actual cave entrance. Uh, so I'm going to do that. Then we're going to continue into the cave and head to the next boss. All right, so Zeal is the boss that you're going to want to kill. Uh, you kill him so that you can actually get into the mines. Alright, so the pathway to the mines is going to open up now. And we can go inside. Once you're in here, you're going to follow that path around until we get to Norushin. Okay, once you get to the chamber where Norushin is at, you're going to have to wait. There's going to be a lot of dialogue between him and Chin. And eventually you'll be able to go up and talk to Norushin. And that's when you can start the boss fight. So just kind of hang out until you're able to do that. Okay, so the last line of dialogue is going to be Speak to me again when you are prepared to face your inner demons. At that point, you'll be able to go up to Norushin and talk to him. And you're not actually going to fight Norushin. He kind of summons up a trial for you. 
And so we'll take a look at this boss real quick. This is going to be Norushin. Like I said, it's not actually him. And all the stuff you can get is uh, Transmog as well. Alright, so you're going to start up this fight. This fight is basically just a tank and spank. You can pay attention to the ads if you want to. You can ignore them. It's entirely up to you. Uh, all you really need to do is just focus on the main big kind of shaw creature that comes out here. There are going to be these floating orbs on the outside. I know they're shiny and tempting and you might want to click them. Don't do that because it takes you out of the boss fight and then you have to start all over again. So, like I said, just go ahead and tank and spank. We'll come back once he's dead. Okay, once you've defeated the boss, you can loot the corpse and then Norishin will come up and he's going to open these doors in front of us. This is going to lead us to the next boss, which is going to be the Shah of Pride. Now, once these doors open, you have to go inside and there are going to be a bunch of these like Shah corruption things that are here. You need to clear out all of them in order to spawn the boss. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and we'll come back and talk about the loot for the next boss when I'm done. Okay, so once you've cleared the room, that will spawn the Shaw of Pride. The Shaw of Pride uh, is a boss that will drop a pet. It drops the drop Droplet of Yasharaj. And if we take a look at our pet journal, we can see what that looks like. Okay, so the Droplet of Yasharaj is kind of like a purple shot infection monster. This is also one of the bosses that has a specific drop. So on Raid Finder and normal difficulty, you can also get the Gooey Shaling, and this will allow you to summon a different pet. In this case, it's going to be a Sha Corruption, but it's the normal looking one. So if you want this pet, then you're going to want to run this on either Raid Finder difficulty or Normal difficulty to get it. Okay, so this boss is pretty much just Tank and Spank. The one important thing to note is uh, there is a phase where he will eventually auto-kill you if you don't kill him fast enough. However, this should not be an issue for you. Just keep that in mind that you can't AFK in the middle of the fight and, you know go get a pizza out the oven or something you need to focus and kill him use your cooldowns uh, you've got plenty of time to let them come back between now and the next boss uh, so we're gonna do that and we'll come back after okay so when the boss is dead you're gonna go over to this vault of forbidden treasures that's where you're gonna get your loot you're gonna have to wait for some uh, roleplay stuff to go on characters are gonna come in etc etc and then your one of your faction uh, leaders or heroes will open a portal.